Okay, this is a video for the Math 2413 Calculus 1 Lab for um, Monday, October 25th. And if you are at the normal lab session, then you don't need to watch this video. This is just a rehashing of the lecture that I gave at the, or, or I'm going to give at the beginning of that session. Um, but I try to make the labs accessible if you absolutely can't make it to the session, so therefore I'm making this video. And what I'm going to do here is introduce Newton's method. This is an important. Um, this is an important application of derivatives. My computer had a hiccup there. Sorry about that. And then my pen pad wasn't working for a second. So first, I'm going to look at it graphically, and then we'll go through the uh, the equations. And what Newton's method is going to do for me is compute the, or it's going to approximate the x-intercept of a function. And I just need to be able to know how to take the derivative of the function and to calculate values for the function. So maybe my function looks something like this. Okay, so that's f of x. It's the graph of f of x. And what I would like to know is this, um, this x value here. Well, the first thing I do is I start off with a guess. And I'm going to put a guess way over here so that we can see a little bit of what's going on. And I'm going to call this x1. That's my first guess. Now, this guess isn't very good, and I'll see that it isn't perfect by plugging it into f of x, and I see no, that that's not equal to zero. Um, so I'm going to update this and get a better guess. And the way I update is I draw the tangent line to the function at my first guess. Let me do this in a different color. Go green. I don't have the fancy fancy line drawing tool that Sal does. Okay, and that's going to give me a second guess if I look at the zero of the tangent line, or the x-intercept of the tangent line. All right, and that gives me a second guess, x2. Okay, so x2 is the zero of the tangent line to f of x at x sub 1. So it was the tangent line at x sub 1, and the 0 of that is going to be x sub 2. And that will be a better guess, usually. And then if I want an even better guess, well, I can draw another tangent line, okay, and find the 0 of that. And that would be my x3. So x3 is the 0 of the tangent line. should be line here, 2 f of x at x2. And my be guesses are just going to keep getting better and better. Now, computing the equation for a tangent line is a little bit cumbersome. If we want to do it repeatedly, like this, um, getting a general formula is going to be a whole lot nicer. So what I'm going to do now is find what the x-intercept of the tangent line will be. So if I have y equals mx plus b, okay, what is the x-intercept? Okay. Well, x-intercept is where y is 0. So I set y equal to 0 and solve for x. Okay, I subtract the b, divide by m, and I get that the x-intercept intercept is negative b over m. Now, now for a function f, I'm going to compute the tangent line and then find the x-intercept of that tangent line. So the tangent line to f of x at and I'll just use a value, I'll call it xi. So i is a variable representing that I have x1, x2, x3, it's one of those guys. And I'm trying to find the next guy by finding the x-intercept of that tangent line. Well, uh, that tangent line is the line with point xi f of xi. And the slope 
is f prime of xi. So if I plug in for y, m, and x into my y equals mx plus b formula, I get that f of xi is f prime of xi okay, times x, which is xi, right, plus b. Now if I solve for b here, I get b equals f of xi minus f prime of xi times xi. Okay. So my equation of the tangent line would be if I plugged in this value for m and this value for b. Okay, into here, but I'm not actually wanting the equation of the tangent line, I just want the x-intercept. And the x-intercept is what I get when I do negative b over m. So I'm going to change the signs on b, and I have um, negative b over m is, let's see, negative f of xi minus, or excuse me, plus, since I changed those signs, um, f prime of xi xi, remember I changed the signs because of this minus sign out here, and then I'm dividing by m, which is f prime of xi. So for Newton's method, my next guess should be, well, I'm going to change the order a little bit, so these two would cancel if I broke it up into two fractions, and it would just leave me with xi, and then for the other fraction I have minus f of xi over f prime of xi. Okay. Alright, so that's Newton's method. We start with a guess and we keep iterating it to get better and better guesses. And this is the formula that we're going to use for iteration. Now I'm going to go through an example of using Newton's method to compute the square root of 2. So I'm going to erase everything on this page and rewrite my formula for um, for Newton's method and that is the next guess, x sub i plus 1, is the previous guess minus the function evaluated at the previous guess divided by the derivative. And what I'm going to do here is get a decimal approximation for square root of 2. Now, your calculator does not use Newton's method to approximate this. Instead, it uses the Taylor polynomials that we talked about last week. Your calculator does, however, use Newton's method to calculate zeros of functions. When you graph it and you tell it to go find the zero, uh, it uses a variant of what we're talking about here, a variant of Newton's method. And this is a nice, um, not too complicated example, so that's why we use it. Well, the square root of 2 is the zero, which means the x-intercept, of x squared minus 2. Okay. So it's the I should actually say it's a positive one. There's two of them, plus or minus square root of 2. It's a positive 0 of x squared minus 2. It's the number that if you plug this in, you get out 0. Okay. So if I want to approximate this, I can use Newton's method since I'm trying to find the x-intercept, trying to find the 0. So I'm going to start off with an initial guess, and I'm going to, it's going to be a bad guess. I'll start off with a guess of 2. Actually, I guess I've already got... No, I'll start off with a guess of 2. Alright. And now I need to figure out what function I iterate. Okay, so for my next one, what am I going to do? I'm going to take my previous guess, 2, and subtract the function evaluated at 2 divided by the derivative evaluated at 2. And what I'm doing there is finding the x-intercept of the tangent line. So this is my f of x. Well, we know what the function is. It's just x squared minus 2. 
So that would be 2 squared minus 2, which gives me, yet again, 2. <laughs> and then the derivative is 2x, so that would be 2 times 2. And we get 2 minus 2 over 4. So that would get, give a guess of, uh, next guess of 1.5. Now to iterate this over and over and over, um, I'm going to enter it into my calculator. So what are we going to enter into the calculator? Well, in our case, I'll put this over here, f of x is x squared minus 2, and f prime of x is 2x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter in 2, and then I'll hit the ANS key, and that's done by hitting second and then the negative sign, because there's a blue ANS above the negative sign. And then I'm going to enter in a formula. And the formula I'm going to enter in corresponds to this for ANS. So wherever I see a 2 here, I'm going to put an ANS. So I'll enter in ANS minus, okay, now I need the function evaluated at ANS. So that will be ANS squared minus 2, and then divided by the derivative. I'll need to put that in parentheses too to make sure it divides by both of them. Without the parentheses, it would divide by 2 and then multiply by a and s. And that would spit out my x2. Okay, so I'm going to do that in my calculator here. Unfortunately, you can't see what I'm doing. I'm not that technical, technologically advanced, and getting an on-screen TI-84 calculator is a little bit expensive, so we're not doing that here. Okay, and I see that if I start off with 2, sure enough, I get a second one of 1.5. Now, since I've done this with A and S, if I just hit enter again, it'll do this formula again for me. Uh, but it'll plug in 1.5 this time. And this time I get x3 is 1.416 repeating. By the way, the decimal approximation for square root of 2 is 1.414213562. Okay, now if I hit enter again, that'll give me the next iterate of Newton's method, and I get 1.414215686 is the full accuracy of my calculator, and we can see it's already accurate to the thousandth. Place. Actually, it's at, no, it's accurate to the, let's see, this is the hundred thousandths place. And if I hit enter again, I actually have the um, decimal approximation to the full accuracy that the calculator displays. So even though I started off with a pretty pitiful guess for the square root of 2, it took only four iterates to end up with a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 decimal place accurate answer. At least to 9 decimal places. Who knows, it might be accurate to more, but that's the most the calculator will tell me. Okay, so for Newton's method, you're going to study how this thing works in the, calculate, in, the, in the lab this week. And some of it you'll be doing by hand. Some of it will, I'll actually have you do in the calculator, meaning I'll have you calculate zeros of functions. And we're going to see that sometimes the calculator behaves in a way that we do not understand. Um, and that it really is strange. Um, so you can do that in the lab. And um, I will see you in class on Tuesday.